In this example, we're given vector c and d in component form. In part a, we want to find the magnitude of vector c minus vector d. In part b, we want to find the magnitude of vector c minus the magnitude of vector d. So for part a, we'll first find the difference of these two vectors. So we'll have the magnitude of, again, vector c minus vector d. So to find this difference, we'll subtract the x components and then subtract the y components. So for the x component, we would have negative eight minus negative two, which is equivalent to negative eight plus two, or negative six. And the y component would be negative four minus six, which would be negative 10. And now we'll find the magnitude of this resultant vector. So this would give us the square root of negative six squared plus negative 10 squared, which would be equal to the square root of negative six squared, which is 36, plus negative 10 squared, that's 100. So this is equal to the square root of 136. But we do want to simplify this, so we're looking for the perfect square factors of 136. And it's often helpful to look at the prime factorization to determine the perfect square factors. So for 136, to find the prime factorization, we might start with two times 68. 68 is two times 34, and 34 is two times 17. So the prime factorization at 136 is two times two times two times 17. Two squared is a perfect square factor, so this will simplify. The square root of two squared, or the square root of four is just two, so this simplifies to two times the square root of 34. So this is the magnitude of vector c minus vector d. And now for part b, we want to find the magnitude of vector c and then subtract the magnitude of vector d. So we'll have the magnitude of vector c minus the magnitude of vector d. So for the magnitude of vector c, we would have the square root of negative eight squared plus negative four squared minus the magnitude of vector d would be the square root of negative two squared plus six squared. So here we have 64 plus 16, so that would be the square root of 80 minus the square root of four plus 36 would be 40, so we have minus the square root of 40. Now we want to simplify these. If we know that 16 is a perfect square factor of 80, that would save us some time. If we can't, we would look at the prime factorization of 80. So for 80, we might start with eight times 10. Eight is equal to four times two. 10 is equal to two times five. And four is equal to two times two. So the prime factorization of 80 would have four factors of two and a factor of five. Notice how we can see here, two to the fourth is 16. Let's go ahead and write this as two times two times two times two times five minus, well 40 is equal to four times 10, four is equal to two times two, 10 is equal to two times five. Every pair of equal factors represents a perfect score factor of the radicand. So two squared is a perfect square, as well as here. So simplifying this first square root, we actually would have two times two times the square root of five, minus here we have two square root 10. So our final result would be four square root five minus two square root 10. So if you don't have to show all this work, that's great. We could have written the square root of 80 as the square root of 16 times five, and we could have written the square root of 40 as the square root of four times 10. If we were able to determine the perfect square root factors of the radicands, the square root of 16 is four, so it gives us four square root of five. The square root of four is two, giving us minus two square root 10. But again, if we can't determine the perfect square factors of the radicand, looking at the prime factorization always works. I hope you found this helpful.